Hi guys, welcome to Irish Funny Vlogs. Welcome back to another First Division review show. Delighted to welcome Gavin Woods back on and uh, he must be bored with the lack of Cork City football. And Keith Ryan, uh, he must be bored of Bray football. Moving on, El Clasico at Lone Town, Longford Town, at Lone Town 2, Longford Town 2 in El Clasico. And, uh, you know, they had to get the big boys out for this one. Gavin, Joseph Nadal was in commentary duties here. Finished 2-2. Adam Lennon after four minutes, Adiyamo equalising after eight minutes, Alua after 42, and Robinson after 61. Some good goals in this game. Uh, obviously a good game, uh, points shared. Both teams actually had won three of their last five. For Athlone, that's particularly good, to be honest with you, coming into the game. Uh, they're off the bottom of the table, like the four points clear of Cove, and we wouldn't have thought that, to be honest, a couple of weeks ago even, but they're in decent form, very decent form for a team that are so low in the league. And... Um, Lewis scoring his 10th goal of the season, which is fantastic for him. But uh, Adam Lennon, Lennon seems to be the man at the moment for them overall. Like He's got four goals in nine games. He's returning from UCD and loan. In this game, he scored a goal, the opener, but um, he was brilliant in the setup for the goal for Alua as well. Um, they have to be happy enough overall at loan before we get into Longford, Gavin. Yeah, and, and by the looks of it, they played well looking at the... You know, looking at the, the the preview of it, um, you know, I was like looking at it there because I was I was saying it like it, it's great for him in that sense because I think unfortunately at Lone's next three games are City, Galway, and Waterford. Like so, you know, they they I think that's that's their final remaining games. Their last three games. Yeah, so Jesus on about a baptism of fire to finish off the season. But look, no matter what for him, um, it, it was a good result. Um. So, Adam Lennon, the, the, he took his first goal well, but the, the player for the second goal was superb. Uh, fair play to the Athlone keeper, whose throw for the, that second goal when he got they were it was long for had to break a play. The keeper threw out down the line to him. It was like a kick out basically, and um, you know they, he ran the line or whatever, and had great play there and put the ball into the box and a great finish by Alua. Um, but to, so to be fair to him, and and actually the first goal as well, um, his 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 goal, Adam Lennon's goal there, I think it was number twenty six. I think his name is Mutua. I think it was his name centre half, uh, Charles Mutua. I think so, something like that was his name. It's a bit of a foreign name, but uh, he put a beautiful ball in for Lennon's goal. So he caught everybody by surprise. He just dinked the ball over the top, and Lennon managed to keep himself onside. So um, I think Athlone will be very happy with the result. And as we said, Thomas Alou again doing the damage again for Athlone. You know, looks looks like a fine player. Yeah, um, Keith, I mean, at Longford Town themselves are fourth in the league and they're in that position where they're not going to finish higher. Potentially, they could finish lower if things go wrong for them. I know they have a game in hand on Treaty and a four points clear, but they had to come from behind twice in this game. To be fair, Robinson's uh, equaliser was uh, a brilliant long-range effort and uh, that's not the first time Robinson's done that either, is it, Keith? No, I, I've admired Robinson a lot this season. I think he's a, I think he's a great player for, for Longford Town and there was a there was a period of time where he was, I think he was injured for a couple of games, and you could see that Longford were struggling a little bit. Um, he kind of dictates stuff for them in the in the centre of the park. So, look, it's not great preparation for for Longford uh, going into the playoff picture. Um, obviously you want to be winning your games, and you want to be going in with a bit of form. Um, but at the end of the day, it was a derby game, you know, and uh, anything can happen in a der- happen in a derby game. Um. But Gary Cronin's teams are normally uh, quite tight at the back and he won't be happy with the two goals conceded. No, he won't. But that's one of the things that alone the features this season, actually, to be fair to them. They do score goals, but uh, things looking up for them, to be fair, has to be said. But uh, we'll move on to Treaty and Galway. And uh, I think Galway blew an opportunity. When I say blew an opportunity, they equalised late on. Like, you know, but they had to win this game, in my honest opinion. And I really do think it was the last chance to learn. There's six points beyond Cork. There's nine points available. Um, Walsh did level up after 80 minutes uh, after of course who else but Ender Curran gave Treaty the lead against his old club um, and um, yeah one all draw for Galway Gavin it doesn't do an awful lot for them like even though like they kind of done well to get a draw in the end type thing it, it just doesn't do much for them does it? No I think they needed to, 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 to win that game to be honest and you know, going away to treat you were on form anyway. It was you no, know, I, I said that like it was for them for Galway to get a draw there, it was going to be decent anyway. Um, look, it's it, it, in a sense, it's probably after putting Cork City in a better position again. Uh, looking at it, you know, if things if things go their way next Friday night, who knows? But uh, 
you know, I could be I could be shouting from the rafters next Friday night, depending on the whole things go. But um, no, they had to win that game, Galway, and I think so. Um, I, I think as well, and that's what's kind of surprised me with 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 John Coughlin and with Galway is that they've they've stuttered through games like that. I know City, you know, sometimes have stuttered through, but like they're the results that you'd be expecting Galway to pick up the three points. So uh, I'm kind of surprised at the same time. I'm not, I know that sounds, uh, you know, contradicting myself, but I'm not surprised either because Galway are liable to do anything. So I think um, I think they'd be quite disappointed in that. But to be fair to Treaty, you have to give them credit because they're in form at the moment. One win and five for Galway. If you're chasing down a team, that's not the kind of form needed to catch the team ahead of them, is it? No. Um, and like I suppose, that was the surprising thing in it. I know they beat City probably in that in those games, but not to get results in the other four is disappointing for Galway, especially with the, the money invested and, and you know what their hopes are for. You know, I kind of like I probably said myself at the start of the season. If I had to look, I'd have probably expected Galway to you know to be top of the league now, but it hasn't gone its way for it's, it hasn't gone their way this season. Like so, you know, look, luckily for me, everything has gone Cork City's way this year. So you know, touch wood, it stays that way with the last couple of games to go. Keith, what do you think they've lacked in recent weeks, Galway? Though I don't know. I, I really don't know. I mean, they they certainly have the squad there, you know, and uh, I don't know if it's believed. You lack a or, little bit of flair. Yeah, potentially. I know. I know. Match Gavin winners. Probably... You know what I mean. Match winners. I know Walsh top scorer in the league with fifteen goals, but he's not what you'd call a flair player as such, is he? Well, Gavin will probably agree with me here. Like uh, Caulfield's Cork City, these teams didn't really have a lot of flair. They were grafters, you know, and that's what this Galway team is. They're grafters, you know. When you, when you sign Bastian Heary to be a backup for Conor McCormick, you can you can you can see like they, they're looking for grafters. Um, Rob Manley really hasn't worked out for them. Um, Wilson Moero is very hot and cold. Um, so yeah, and we we mentioned Longford, um, uh, not in form or <laughs> not getting the results going into the playoff. Jeez, one win of five against for Galway, and um, it's it's not looking good. And this was kind of a dress rehearsal of what's going to be the first semi final in the in the first division playoff. So, um, look, fair play to three. I believe uh, Keith that um. The, the penalty decision on the, on the night was a bit dodgy. Uh, I know a lot of treaty fans were giving out about it and the the, the inconsistency of refereeing yeah. in the country. But, um, I mean, treaty will fancy their chances if they do play Galway in the playoff. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, Enda Curran is the man there at the moment, isn't it? And uh, as you say, treaty, is it fair to say treaty have sus- well, you know, the, yeah, if Wexford win the game in hands, they're still five be- points behind Treaty with two games. They have it, really, don't they? The player. I, yeah, I think so. But, sorry, yeah, am I talking here? Yeah? Yeah, Keith, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I think I think they do, but they do have tough games. They do have yeah. tough games ahead, and they play Wexford the last game. So, you know, it is squeaky bum time, and, you know, if they had a home on the other night, obviously it was guaranteed. But, um, look, a great second season again from Tommy Barrett. They're in a FEI Cup semi final. He has them in the playoffs two years in a row. What more could you ask for as a treaty fan? An FEI Cup final appearance. Moving on, Waterford FC three, Cove Ramblers one. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like, and um, yeah, comfortable enough win it seemed for Waterford. They were training it up in this game. Uche Patterson with his 14 goal season and Wazim. And I think the the thing with Waterford is they're obviously playing very well, but. They're getting those cup results, but they're still doing it in the league as well. They're actually only three points behind Galway now, and it wouldn't be a major shock if they actually finished ahead of Galway for what that's worth, you know what I mean? Um, but they've added the likes of Wazim and the Spaniard Uche as well to an already free-scoring-looking type side, to be fair. And, uh, you know, they're a serious threat, aren't they? When they get into the play, they will be in the playoffs, Gavin. They're a serious threat at the moment, and they look like a team who have really improved, and there's a big feel feel good factor at the club as well which is massive yeah and it's it's about building confidence Keith and things are going their way at the moment and as you said they brought in Uche and, and Sean Lean was saying that he's been a, a super signing since he came in uh, and as we've said already like you know they, they have a great attacking prowess anyway and they, they seem to just score goals for fun against most teams they'll fancy themselves in the semi-final of the FBI Cup and you know who knows they could finish runners up in the league yet you know don't be surprised if they beat Galway to that second spot um, and like they're you know attacking wise they're superb to watch I've said that 
do you know about him to be fair um i suppose i suppose looking at it from cork city's point of view as a cork city fan i, I think like you know we done well to get results against them especially mm-hmm. away from home um but um you know to be fair they, like most of the other teams they 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 kind of scored for fun because they're they're such an attacking threat um and like you know don't be don't be a bit surprised like the result against Cove wasn't a surprise in that sense um, you, you like you're going to expect them to score goals, and they're going to leak goals as well. As I said, that's probably been their their Achilles' heel all season is that they just give away bad goals. But uh, when it comes to scoring goals, they definitely have the firepower to do it. Yeah, I mean Keith O'Connell scored for Cole, but um, they're kind of getting worse as the season goes on, whereas Athlone are getting a bit better. Much of a concern is that, particularly with Shane Keegan now in charge there. I've said it multiple times and Gavin will back me up here. I think Shane Keegan's focusing on next season. Uh, he's just hoping the season's over quicker than he'd hope. Um, like, I mean, you're right. They, they haven't been in good form. And, you know, although they've given Cork City a couple of um, a couple of games this season, uh, particularly in the FEI Cup, uh, they were close games. But, like, you know, uh, there is a rebuilding job for Shane Keegan. He'll bring his own players in. Um, but as I've said over and over again, when you have a, a big sister like Cork City in the region, uh, it's difficult to bring in the players that you actually want from that area. So uh, it's, you know, it's, it's funny, a tough I'll put in a little bit there because it just came into my head. It probably suits Cole better actually to have Cork in the Premier Division in reality because maybe they can get one or two players that aren't quite up to the standard that, that Cork would need in the Premier Division potentially. You know what I mean? Absolutely, and there is a the potential then of Cove maybe taking a couple of Cork City players on loan as well yeah. uh, to, to aid them in the first division. So obviously they wouldn't be able to do that in the division with them. So um, yeah, major rebuilding job for 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 Cove and Gavin knows them more than than, than most. Um, there's a couple of players in there that Shane will be looking to hang on to, but he probably will get rid of maybe two tours of that team. Yeah, I think so as well. Finish, sorry to this, you keep it, we have to go to Wexford FC4, Bray Wonders 2 at Ferry Carry Park and uh, two goals inside the first 13 minutes for Wexford, Davis and Dobbs. They actually had a chance before Davis even scored two minutes, to be honest. Uh, Doherty was back in the side. He managed to get a goal and Leno Sullivan laid on for Bray, Douglas and Hart scores. Um, they were 2-0 down, made a 2-1. They were 3-1 down, made a 3-2. But um, this kind of seemed to... F- I'll start with Keith here first because obviously... This kind of, it seemed to flatter. Would it be fair to say 4-2 flattered Bray in this game, Keith, to be honest? Uh, certainly, first half, um, we were looking to be 2 nil down at halftime. Um, Wexford had multiple chances to add to their scoreline. And, um, you know, Wexford, uh, uh, all their goals came down the left side. Uh, Dean Zamra was playing right back. And nothing nothing against Dean Zamra. Um, he's not a right back. He's a, he's a central midfielder. He was, he was thrown into deep end to play right back and um, fortunately uh, Thomas Considine gave him a nightmare of, um, of a, he gave him a run around let's be honest uh, and as he said two goals in 13 minutes and was it was probably game over at that stage you didn't really see Bray getting back into it uh, Hugh Douglas obviously uh, get, got one back from, from a corner trademark Hugh Douglas, Douglas goal trademark Douglas trademark you know mm. and um, fair play to you I, I need to say this he was he was one of only two players to come over. There wasn't many of us at the game. I could count the Bray fans on two hands that were at the game. Huey and another player come over and said, thanks for coming down. And fair play to him for that because there's not a lot of players in the league that after a 4-2 defeat will um, will come over to the fans and say thanks. But yeah, uh, I don't know if you've seen Leno Sullivan's goal. What an absolute yeah. stunner. Absolute stunner. Um, Wexford will be kicking themselves, Keith. They'd be really kicking themselves. Um, poor form in the last couple of weeks, and they could have been challenging to play off there. They're almost over. I was just going to uh, say that to Gavin, actually, that they'd be very disappointed Sorry. that they're not a bit closer to Treaty, won't they? I mean, Jack Doherty was back for this game, and you wonder, you know, he's been out a while, hasn't he? And he scored in this game as well. And I know they've scored goals. They have scored goals in the last few months with him out. But still, when you're missing a player that quality for Wexford, it has to take a few points off them at least, doesn't it, Gavin? Oh, definitely, Keith. And like you know, I've been singing his praises all season. Your favorite player of all time. He's nearly up there now with uh, Ryan Giggs, like. Um, 
But uh, he's, you know, to be fair to him, though, like when I've seen him, he's been super, he's a super link player with the, with the strikers. Um, and, uh, you know, just super on the ball, you know. Like, I suppose, it, it, when you're watching games, and I've said this, when you're looking at teams and you're looking at players and you see fellas, especially when Cork City are, you know, they've been up there for most of the season. So you're kind of looking at other teams and looking at players who you're kind of saying, you know, who you think would add to a Cork City team that had been doing well. And I think he's the type of player I think he would add to the team. Um, technically, he's excellent. And, you know, it, it, it just goes to show that, you know, he comes back into the side and, and, and they go. Um, so, like, I mean, there's no doubt he's been the last one, you know. I suppose probably the whole ones are six or seven weeks, like, you know. So, like, they're probably, you could have probably picked up another six or seven points out of that alone, you know, mm-hmm. if he was in the squad. Um, but uh, they'll be delighted to have him back in the team again. Yeah, brilliant, guys. We'll leave it there. Guys at home, please subscribe. Let us know what you think in the comments. And thanks for watching. Cheers, guys.